Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and I am all red in the face and sweaty because I was just weeding my uh, in-ground tomato bed this morning. Uh, I have the week off of work, and I am, today is supposed to be mostly overcast, and so I plan on spending a good portion of the day working on the front and back garden, the backyard and the front garden. Um, but I thought I'd take you along for seeing a couple of updates of the garden today. Um, and I'm going to be harvesting some things. We have a new uh, blossom from something I planted late in the summer. So let me uh, take you around and show you what's going on. The zinnias that I planted in July have now, or late June, early July, have now started blossoming. And I have not grown an orange zinnia before. Um, this one is really, I mean, it's, it's big. Look at the size of my hand, right? And then it looks like this plant is gonna be pink. Yay! So we're gonna have some new color to our garden. And you know how much I love flowers and zinnias and color and all of that. My edamame are finally getting close to the size that I would harvest them. I think I will give them a couple more days, except maybe this one. This one looks pretty close to the size I want, but look how beautiful they are. We might get enough for my husband and I to share from these, what, eight plants that survived? I mean, there's a good amount on each one, I'd say, like especially this one and that one. So, uh, looking forward to some edamame very soon. I mentioned in the last video how much the Christmas lima beans were taking over and blocking the sun from the peppers. And I just want to show you how massive this thing has gotten. I mean, to give you context, look at it. And uh, it is just going gangbusters. I mean, gangbusters. I'm trying to get around the... Look at this beast. Let's find some pods in here. See if we have any ready to harvest yet. Now, I read, I heard, and I did this last year, that you don't want to harvest the pods until they're hard. This one's still kind of soft. But it's still blooming. Look, it's still producing flowers. So we will have many, 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 many lima beans. And I'm not actually going to store them. I'm going to harvest them fresh and cook them and have them in recipes because um, <clears throat> I got enough last year to be able to plant these forever. And here, let's see how this one's doing. So if you let Christmas lima bean pods come to full maturity where they dry up and get brown, the beans inside usually get two to three per pod, um, usually turn a beautiful red and white color spotted red and white. But if you open them early, you can, I mean, they're lima beans, you can eat them fresh. And I'm remembering now how hard it is to open them without a knife. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut the end off here. Let's see. Let's see what this looks like my finger up there oh yeah look they're already starting to get some color which tells me that these are ready to eat now of course I wouldn't eat lima beans raw <laughs> um, actually I don't know if they're edible raw either way I wouldn't eat them raw so I'm gonna harvest some of these shells or some of these um, beans and I'm gonna have some lima beans as a side with my lunch today they're really um, they're starting to harden a little bit but they still have a little bit, still have a little bit of give to them. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go find some more pods and see if I can get maybe 15 of these to eat up. Turns out that we had several that had already started drying up. Now this isn't necessarily as dry as you want them. They still have a little bit of green to them, but let's see if we can find one. You can hear. Hear it moving around in there? That definitely means that one's good to go. 
this one too. And these are easier to open up because they're dry. You can just pop them like that. And then this one only has one in it, but look how pretty that is. Nice. So let's look what they look like when they're fully mature. And I can cook them with the other ones just fine. Now they do lose this pretty marking. You can, you can see it a little bit when you cook it. You can see sort of the hint of the colors, but they basically turn like a pale green when you cook them. So they look very much like a lima bean looks when you cook it. But if you put them in a jar, they're very pretty. <laughs> one of the things I want to harvest today is one of my cabbage. Um, they're doing pretty good. You know, if you recall, I planted these really close together. I didn't mean to plant them this close together, but they're doing pretty good overall. This one is the farthest along, and really the head hasn't grown that much. Uh, they're supposed to be, let's see how wide across this is by fingers. So it's like four inches across. They're supposed to be six to eight inches across, but I think probably they won't get to full size because I did crowd them together. So this is the Charmant, I think F1. I'll put the right name up above variety. Um, and I am going to fertilize, um, you know, with liquid fish emulsion or maybe some other fertilizer the other was the others today but let's go ahead and harvest this guy you know I'm just gonna I don't want to mess with the roots for the others <laughs> so short of a couple of leaves that have been eaten up the plant itself it's in pretty good condition ooh Oh, cool, there's a spider on here. Where'd he go? Where'd you go, Mr. Spider? I don't want to take you indoors. Come on. A spider and a... Look at that. <laughs> Look at that slug on there. My goodness, that thing is huge. <laughs> so a spider and a slug were on here. The spider was really cool looking. I hope he... Uh, exits because I don't want to take him indoors if he's doing a good job controlling the population in here. Oh my goodness, look at that. So many slugs. <laughs> they are what eat my cabbage more than anything else. All right, so that's what we're left with. It's about the size of my hand after I cut away all the nasty parts. Um, I'm definitely going to cut this off and put this in the put this in the compost. But overall, you know, I will have to wash it because there were some slugs on this side. You can see a little bit of the slime there. But I overall, this is enough for a nice side dish. If I chop this up, add some carrots to it. Where's my water hose? Yeah, I can still feel a little bit of the slime on there. If I add some soap, that'll take care of it. Or I might just take off that leaf that has the slime on it. Um, but if I look inside, it's pretty clean. You know, for, <laughs> it's small, right? But for the fact that I had to move my cabbage over in an emergency when we were going to be um, treating the uh, foundation of the house for um, termites, you know, I had to move them into another bed in an emergency. And I toyed with the idea of just tossing out the seedlings because, you know, how could I fit them into a container? What am I going to do? Where are they going to get enough sun? Um, and, you know, they were pretty low maintenance. I had some bridal tool over them for the most part of the beginning. And then I took it off probably about a month ago um, just because the bridal tool was getting holes in it. So it wasn't really doing its job, uh, not for any other reason. And you know what? I'm going to have four cabbages this size, which, you know, when you add carrots and purple cabbage and other things, that's a good side dish for a lunch for me and my husband um, with sandwiches and pickles, maybe. And um, 
you know, that's something I wouldn't have had if I hadn't just gone ahead and experimented. I'll give you an overall view of the majority of the front yard garden so you get a sense. Um, the zinnias are, you know, I haven't um, cut off all the drying heads and I'm, I plan on doing a video soon on how to harvest and save zinnia seeds. Um, but they are sort of at the end of their cycle. I am, if I cut them back, I still might get some more out of them, but they've given me really good production this year. And the Indian flower blankets over there are still doing really, really well. So our sunflowers are done for this season. Uh, I have a couple sunflowers that I planted in June that are starting to grow and maybe we'll get some out of them this this late summer early fall my in-ground tomatoes are doing better than of course the ones that aren't in ground this is going to be a brandy wine if it makes it it doesn't have blossom and rot so that's good this is an abe lincoln tomato and i it turns red it's a red tomato but i'm going to go ahead and harvest it because i don't I'm getting so precious few tomatoes this year because of the blight issue I experienced that I really don't want to risk squirrels getting it. And I do have the nice little baggies I can put over them, but uh, while that works really great, you know, some slip by or I'm kind of getting lazy about the baggies. <laughs> I just bring them in. Tomatoes like these, they do get more nutrition staying on the vine, but you can get uh, you can get them to ripen on the counter just fine, and they will taste just as good, I, I, by my experience at least. We also have a Cherokee tomato that has started to blush. I've been watching this for days. And I'm going to take that in as well. All right, so there we have it. Some tomatoes from my in-ground tomato bed. The pepper bed continues to do really well, both of them. Both this one, now that's yarrow in the middle there the peppers and eggplants. There's a nice ping tongue eggplant and we have a Japanese Nagasaki eggplant growing here. I need to harvest those soon. A quick update on my swallowtail caterpillars. I saw there were some um, robins um, and red cardinals eyeing the swallowtails and I think they got a couple of them. So I put this bridal tool up. I kind of propped it up with this little table to help give the swallowtails a little bit more of a fighting chance of surviving the caterpillars. And uh, let's see, let's check if we have any still in here. I think the birds might've gotten to them. Let's see. Oh, look guys, there's one and he's got nice and fat. Oh, I wonder if he's trying to turn into a chrysalis. Let's see, do we have any others? Oh, there's another one over here that's also looking nice and fat. So it looks like we have at least two that survived. So far, I'm going to put the bridal tool back over. And let's hope, let's hope against hope that they continue to do well. Also, these poinsettia peppers are starting to look really, really beautiful. They're getting that beautiful red pepper sticking out of the top. Really pretty decorative pepper. Definitely gonna grow that again next year. And inside the house, the seed saving process is getting into swing. I haven't um, saved everything yet, but those are my Jimmy Nardello peppers. Those are some zinnias, marigolds. We have the Indian blanket flowers and um, calendula. So a good variety here. I am going to be doing one or more videos on how I save seeds. I'll definitely do one on how I save zinnia seeds um, and calendula and the sunflower is an experiment. This was the uh, giant sunflower, the um, one in the backyard on the fence that grew and it the head came off, broke off. So I just brought it inside, let it dry on the stem a little bit. Ooh, it's looking a little moldy under there. And uh, wanted to let the seeds dry a little bit. I think I'll just go ahead and take them out now. Now they're coming out easy. I don't know whether I'll eat them or save them. Um, I'm not sure how um, mature the seeds were for saving for next year. I might save a couple and plant them just out of curiosity to see how the process works. But uh, yeah, I mean, aren't they beautiful? seeds. All right. Well, that's it for this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so and make sure you have the bell alarm set so you get alerts when I post new content. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.